a battle of the most represented in this top 16, and uh, not for for good reason on both sides. Claren, a very uh, in a game that is centered around platform movement, a character that disguises a lot of their flaws with platform movement is generally going to be pretty uh, pretty solid. Meanwhile, Absa, we've talked at length. Yeah. How do you feel about them going head to head, though? The fact that they're going up against each other, starting off on Julesville for the set, I think is going to bode very well for Akashi. We have seen time and time again that one errant move on this stage just leads to disaster. And the cloud happens to force a lot of errant movement. So if Koda is able to stay well reserved in how they move and just absolutely take a hold of base stage, I think Koda could take this. But if they get a bit too frisky or if they overextend even a tiny bit, disaster awaits them. Yeah, because it. I'm, I'm just now remembering that we did see this matchup play out with niceness up against uh, Uda. And uh, of course, Niceness took that in a 3-0. It'll be interesting to see how Koda goes about making changes to Uda's own game plan while also trying to enact what, Ak what Akashi is doing differently. Because Akashi, a little bit more on the back foot, a little bit more on the back pedal compared to Niceness, who was fiending for follow-ups off of Cloud and had frequent usage of that same Cloud. Akashi, a little bit different, and Koda is going to have to adjust for that as well Ooh. instead of just le learning by doing. <laughs> Yeah, adjusting to different play styles, I think, is something that's very demanding in this particular bracket when you consider all of the talented opses that are here and the fact that they all play ever so slightly different. The fact that Akashi's a bit more on the patient end compared to Niceness, I think, is going to be a fairly large adjustment for Koda because you're going to have to worry about a character that's just going to wait for you and then punish for when you make the wrong type of landing. And you know that you're not always going to have the right type of landing when you're forced to move around, whether it's the long forward tilt, whether it's the Cloud or whether it's Akashi's Opsa herself just maneuvering around. And if there's a way to go up-tempo, Koda is certainly trying to find it, but a parry on the down tilt. These grounded options that are usually so consistent for Clarin. One nothing more! Nothing doing, nothing doing. Here, you got par your down tilt got parried once, and he said, all right, one interaction for damage, one more for the stock. Oh, no. Okay, that, was off of, that was a DRE too, I think. Like... The forward air, forward air, we're going upwards, so up air covers it. I mean, it's huge already, but the fact that it should have just been another forward air, and the fact that Koda had the presence of mind to DI properly, and still got cooked! It shows that Kashi's very much plugged in for this one. 50-50s hey, are... <laughs> 50, reactable 50-50s are a namestay of certainly Abs's game plan, because there's a lot of situations that are just, hey, I can get out of this, but I should still be dead. Just dangerous play all around. We have the uh, the, the ice temple skin for Abyss, giving us the five plat layout as it closes in and out. I think this is a fine enough stage pick for Kota, but they need to stay very fluid in how they control those platforms, and that's a hell of a way to do it. Yeah, actually utilizing those platforms while they're in this center form, using them as a springboard and also as an escape tool, finding many neutral techs on this platform before dropping through. It's a t small timing mix-up, but it's a time mix-up nonetheless. We're looking for pokes off of this, trying to extend this speed as much as possible. Koda is not really showing to take his time a little bit, like not trying to rest on a lead, but instead use that lead as a springboard for his advantage. It is very difficult, however, to overwhelm Absa with momentum because you end up overextending a tiny bit and Akashi just finds opportunities there to swing. Given that uh, Absa can find those hit confirms so easily to lead into those dangerous moves, you do have to be mindful about how free you are with your movement, especially as Claren. You don't have the safest of landing options. You can't just swing your way back to center stage, especially if you're not even swinging at Absa, but her cloud. <laughs> Opsa shaped clouds all uh, all over, especially in the fog that is the frozen fortress or the frozen gates. Frozen gates. Stage names aside, it is Akashi taking a dip. Ooh, and a lead still held by Koda playing his way and his way alone as the FGC in his name, showing that experience and showing the ways to close out games when it close out stocks. Ooh, the duck there too to avoid the cloud. Very good from Koda. Wow, and the DI down, the SDI and the normal DI down and away. He's trying to just, he's getting away from stuff and he's getting around stuff, but still trying to find a way to space these tippers. Ooh. He's got it all on lock. 
I love these full hop nares challenging landings from Akashi, uh, uh, from Kota on Akashi. They're important, they're small, but they continuously keep center stage and keep the tempo of the game in Kota's favor. Just such solid play all around. And the fact that Akashi is like forced into a position where he has to match this tempo with Kota just showcases how well Kota is playing this matchup. Like forcing the approach and punishing big without committing too big to where you're moving around. Great confirm there. How does Akashi get back to the stage? One little cloud is all it takes. Who would win? Plasma Sword or a one puffy boy? <laughs> and the puff. Almost finding a way. And just the detonation alone is so threatening, but Kota saving all of those resources to mix up his timings. A little bit of a fastball mixed in there, too. And he gets back to save with a jab, looking for a down tilt. Playing center, playing stage, playing disadvantage. F tilt. Reset. Repeat. That parry no was a bit ill-advised. Just waiting there would have been the key because now you find yourself in a position... You're DIing up strong extremely well. But both characters at Death's Door. It's Coda who cashes in big with the forward strong to take game two. Death's Door already open and just took one of them to knock him through it. Oh, that was such a dangerous situation too. A couple parries and... Oh, if it caught, yeah. yeah. You see the tension from both players. So we get a nice look at just the repeat of this set. And, I mean, Coda is on a hell of a, hell of a loser's run himself, losing in pools early uh, and looking a little bit rough in some of his pools matches, but he's really gathered himself to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Akashi, who looked so good in Winterside and is looking so good now. I mean, it's a 1-1 set. This rubber game is going to determine a lot, but if Coda's still playing like this, still playing with this sense of mind, this presence of advantage, these platform uh, extensions all over the place, we'll be seeing him in top eight and Akashi left in the ninth place dust. Yeah, the fact that Game 3 is bringing us to Treetop means that we are not slowing down at all, Ubo. There is almost no room to mess around on this stage, literally and figuratively. Both of these characters do such a good job of dominating on stage control, and then just one little hit could potentially be the hit confirmed they need to crank out early stocks. It's interesting to see that this is Akashi's counter pick. I know uh, that Abso loves to dominate space, and she can certainly do that very well with up airs like that. Very well placed from Akashi. But you normally see this as a Clarin counter pick because having a large disjoint to cover all of that and small blast zones to boot, these juggles are going to turn out lethal for, uh, uh, for Koda. I think it's just a heavy gamble from Akashi. Like, if he's confident enough with how well he can position Cloud and find meaningful conversions off of those Cloud pips, I think he can make the stage work really well. But I think Koda is just doing what needs to be done to win here. You see how reserved the ground movement is, waiting for Akashi to overstep, and then putting out big damage accordingly. Ooh, and wow. a nice grab, finding a sour hit forward air off of it. Yeah, you almost, like, you have to wish that was more, but hey, any damage is good damage, and you have a solid 80% lead, finding cheeky little interceptions off of your quicker moves in midair. In game two, it was Nair, and this game, it's largely back air that's been so good at these interceptions. Woo. An excellent DI from Akashi has saved his bait multiple times. There's been a few heavy callouts from Koda and just otherwise really good calls on what buttons to press to cover space here. But Akashi getting very tricky with movement has been keeping the game very competitive in spite of the percentage deficit that exists. Because this GOAT is hurting at 157 on this stage? That is a hell of a lot that you get out of one stock, but that stock is good and gone. Side special after 165% worth of a beating. And I think it's what has made Clarin so good for so long, is that a lot of what Clarin does, as we're seeing Akashi try to close out stocks as, it, as he does with that back air, Koda's found ways to not only set up advantage, but repeat advantage. And set up, um, whenever a string or combo would fail, he would be in a position to where he could repeat the same situation again. Yet Akashi can do that all the same with Cloud as that poke gets parried. Suddenly this game is completely turned around and you have to wonder, Hangman, what is called the, what did Akashi do mid game to turn what looked like a massive Koda lead into an Akashi W with an underline?
he turned up. He turned that up. was it, man. <laughs> like, I can't. There's no eloquence behind how I could deliver it. I feel like the action really speaks for itself. Like, Akashi was just playing around the space where Koda wasn't. And even though Koda, throughout all of that game three, was doing such a good job of just cementing control of the base platform, the fact that Akashi was forcing the approach to the higher platforms meant that that little bit of mispositioning was all of that space that Cloud could occupy that would be safe passage for Akashi and that he himself would be able to find those reversals. And I think that all culminated to such a dominating stock three for Akashi. Game four brings us to Spirit Tree, which I think is a fantastic pick for Koda, because time and time again, we've been seeing success for Claren on this stage tonight alone. And I think the fact that all the platforms are so close to the stage and there's just nothing else but open space means that the cloud is not going to have as much control so long as Coda stays on the base platform. You're playing the stage positioning game and hopefully that is going to be a reward as the gamma oh. wave. Oh, missing the parry punish. I think he was trying to go through the, the platform, go for down air there. That's rough. Yeah. To lose the, all that advantage to a misinput and the patience on Coda's part to avoid that mine time and time again. Things are looking up for this rebel, but... Kashi still holding on to this ledge play, looking for the up air, but missing it, and that leads him to a lot of damage. Yeah, 38% found out of nowhere for Coda. This game is looking marvelous. Every time Koto lands a hit, you see that extra stun effect. His spacing has been pristine. His recovery is even more so. But that time, Akashi anticipating what Koda has, where Koda has found success and counterplaying appropriately. I think just rushing in a little bit too much on that part, Koda, trying to make the most out of the percentage lead built up and going to do so in fact. Well spaced up air does bring Akashi down to last stock, but Akashi on the hunt to do the same and didn't have the cloud to try and continue that combo though. A lot of damage, but missing the stock means that you have to deal with Claren in neutral again, which has been proving troublesome on a stage like this, especially given the spacing of all these up airs. So clean. Yeah, that's why I think this is such a good stage to pick into against Opsa, because wherever they place cloud is a very strong commitment. You're, it's not as effective at covering the ledge because you have a lot of options at, with the size of the platforms and how close they are themselves to the base platform. So a character, even with limited movement options like Claren, has, you know, pick of the litter when it comes to how to get back to stage. If Cloud's position there, it's not with you to be able to cover those off-stage plays where you could find kills. But a good commitment there from Akashi does bring us to the tight stock count. Percentage leaves a bit to be desired for Akashi, but he's proven time and time again that he could still make it happen. Yeah, a little bit of deja vu if uh, Koda relinquishes this lead. Good DI on that grab. Uh, F2 on the platform will certainly run Akashi low on resources. But as long as he's got that up special, he's certainly got a dream to get back to stage on top of the landing. <gasps> Missed timing on the parry, but good DI does keep Akashi alive. And that was a huge call with the up special. We're starting to hear the crowd roar a little bit while watching this set in the middle of the venue. Starting to see if Akashi has what it takes to take this back. 123 to 71. Both of them getting to an extreme and both of them falling so slightly. No sparks, but just enough, uh, just a little bit late on Koda the DI. was so close to losing it all right then and there. Good DI avoiding the cloud. Finds the reversal. We get ourselves into a Game 5, Uble. <laughs> Took us a lot to get to a Game 5, but we're here. And so are these two playing out of their minds right now. In a slow-paced battle, tempo ramps up and cools off very quickly. And those changes of pace, changes of timing, is stunned by both players. They're adapting to each other incredibly well. And the amount of just refreshing they have to do, resetting and relearning to what each player wants to go for, it's incredible. Just how much risks each one of them is willing to take, that runoff grab was insane. With game five being end of the line for one of these players tonight, they gotta do everything in their power to take this W a Tower of Heaven for the final game. And the fact that Koda's already trying to kick it up to 11 shows that he recognizes just how dangerous of a situation this is.
Look at that dash and dance and almost finding the down strong, but not finding it was uh, Koda. And if there's anything we've learned from Mr. Akashi, it's that when he has a dr when he has a stock, he has a dream, and he has a way to close out and get a lead of his own. As that roll on was scouted, and the stock is taken. Koda with the first lead of the game. All right, this is gonna be hard work for Akashi to try and fight back from the stock lead here. Not a lot of damage built up on the Coda. Meanwhile, Coda has oh been making God. these little situations clocking so much damage and total stage control. Even with that cloud at dead center, it is not stop slowing down Coda at all. The grab into the back air. Still just carrying along all of this momentum. This ledge play has been humongous for Coda. Yo, a couple of panic Yo. options on that platform, but it missed it. What the tech the, the DI was perfect right to that platform. Finds a dash stack, but if that's all your punish, Koda will take that every day of the week. Look at him run up and not even try and parry, not even try and look anything. He's running up and crouching. He's anti-airing effectively. He's counterplaying Akashi and everything he wants to do. These bread and butters aren't going to work. You have to get new or you have to get dead. Koda's plugged into the matrix right now, <laughs> Ubo. The way that he is moving, the way these buttons are positioned, like Akashi needs to turn it up way past 11 if there's any hope of moving into this top eight. This ledge play starting to look good, and it's doing wonders for slowing down the momentum. Errant DI from that dash attack does result in the stock loss, but that's still a clean stock ahead for Koda. And Akashi immediately giving up center stage. I don't know if that was the best of calls, but getting this battle on the platforms is what Akashi must do to rack up that damage, to threaten that stock, and to try to bring us to a tight stock count. Otherwise, Koda has his ticket to top eight. Yeah, find one up tilt on these platforms, and that's an even game right at the start. But a back air from Koda looking to intercept even more. There it is. There it goes. The lead, the stock count is the same, and these the damage has been racking up so consistently for both players. You can't even call this a lead. Oh, no. This is a dead even game. You've seen time and time again, Akashi can make the damage appear out of nowhere. He just needs one opportunity. But Koda is not giving him that opportunity for free. The dash dancing in this game five has been so clean. Koda refusing to overcommit to any uh -oh. situation. Uh -oh. But hit after hit, it gets more and more dangerous as Akashi has been DI'ing phenomenally to get out of these dangerous situations. Forward strong further racking up the damage, and these back airs starting to look mighty dangerous, Ubel. And these swings starting to get a little bit more is misplaced as the upper barely misses. Another he tried to land an F strong yet again as the up strong covers. Great DI. He tries to come down, rolls in, gets away from the mine. He's holding steady, trying to just play that stage control game, and it's done him wonders thus far. As the oh, he gets line. the catch with the cloud, but amazing DI keeps him alive. Does not find the down strong. This is down to the last hit. Tries to get down as, oh, an ex huge extension, but another one! And oh. the cloud does it. Down to the very last hit. They move in for a hug. And it is well deserved. Fought wow. to his absolute best. It was just one crack reaction from Akashi to commit once again to the charged cloud. At 150% too! That low, he realized once the panic started to set in from Coda, that going off stage and charging the Thunderline, Coda was not going to challenge him. He wasn't going to have that presence. He was just looking to play safe and close down in center, which means some of these haymakers, some of these big plays that Akashi was throwing out, keeping cool under pressure, they were going to go unpunished. And that's huge to realize that in game five last hit after a huge comeback that you were in the midst of making to have the wherewithal to do something like that. Akashi, I mean, Koda had a great run, a long loser's run, but Akashi cements the fact that he deserves to be in top eight. Like, I want to give a big shout out to Akashi's composure Very throughout true. because this set went on for quite a while. Like, this was not an easy one to take back from Coda because multiple games, this was very much looking like Coda's set to lose. And game five was the pinnacle of that. Just overwhelming momentum through those first couple of stocks. And yet, Akashi was still able to uh, just steal his resolve at the very end when those percentages were getting to ridiculous heights. 
Pops is not a heavy character. No, she not, should not, not be living to that point. <laughs> and neither should Claren, honestly. But Akashi kept on going time after time after time to go in for that kill. Found it at the very end. Excellently played. But 